There is little doubt that our world has been sculpted by floods. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of ancient texts describing ancient floods in times of yore. Now, as a geologist, I can also concur that the geomorphology on Earth is screaming floods. Most river valleys are tiny, and they pale in comparison to the geomorphology surrounding them, meaning at a time in the past, these rivers once ran much deeper, larger, and wider. And we have supporting evidence from Ice Age data, the worldwide, and the works of Randall Carlson and many others before him of the great floods of Missoula and the Ice Age floods in general. Now this, take for instance here, this, red, this white line here, this is Lake Missoula's highest level. Clearly, it would have filled the valley with 150 feet of water or more where all these houses are. And this highest level was around 18,000 years ago. And between 18,000 and 12,000 years ago, the giant ice sheet, the Laurentide or the Cordilleran ice sheet, melted off of Canada and flowed out to the Atlantic and the Pacific. But we're looking here at some of the Missoula floods, which were catastrophic floods that flowed to the Pacific via many current waterways that exist only at a much grander scale. And what they left behind was geomorphology, evidence of giant floods, ripples, massive ripples with crests and troughs, tens if not dozens of feet across proving that the waters that once ran here were hundreds of feet deep and pale in comparison to the trickle that is now the river. Now here is some of the evidence coming from Wikipedia. Glacial lake outburst floods to bring you up to speed. But we're talking specifically the Missoula floods, which have been covered in great detail over the last decade from Randall Carlson and other catastrophists. Now the Missoula floods, also known as the Spokane floods, or the Brent's floods, or the Brett's floods, were cataclysmic glacial lake outburst floods that swept periodically across eastern Washington and down the Columbia River Gorge. And this happened during the end of the last ice age, during the time frame of the first, second, and younger Dryas. These floods were the result of periodic sudden ruptures of an ice dam on the Clark Fork River that created glacial Lake Missoula. Now, after each of the ice dam ruptures, the waters of the lake would rush down Clark Fork and the Columbia River, flooding much of eastern Washington and the Willamette Valley in western Oregon. And today we have evidence of these giant ripples and the giant flooding. So can you picture the river coming up 200 feet and moving towards the Pacific. It would certainly leave these geomorphic landforms. Now, many people in our realms are talking about the cataclysmic pole shift hypothesis. And unfortunately, there is no geologic evidence to support this whatsoever. Their claim is that it happens so rapidly that the pole goes from north to the equator and flips back again right to the original position. And in the interim, a massive flood wraps around the earth as the oceans are displaced. Now there is a glowing problem called science in the way of this theory. And the scientific endeavor is in the realms of geology, which I am a specialist in and taught at university. One of my specialties is surficial mapping. And in order to be a surficial mapper in the realms of geology, you need to be a geomorphologist. Geomorphology is the study of landforms, their processes, form, and sediment at the surface of the earth, and sometimes on other planets. The study includes looking at landscapes to work out how the earth's surface processes, such as air, water, and ice, 
could mold the landscape. You see, landforms are produced by erosion or deposition. As rock and sediment is worn away by these earth surface processes and transported and deposited into different locales, scientists like myself can uncover and unravel how these deposits were made. And I'll leave you links to geomorphology to catch you up to speed. A lot of my geologic mapping was with one of the top geologic mappers at the USGS in Nevada at the time, back in the 90s. And we did a lot of updates to the mapping in Nevada. Now, all the white regions here are the current lakes, reservoirs, alluvial, and playa deposits since the last ice age. These are referred to as the recent geomorphic sediments, alluvial fans, and other things. And they're very similar to the deposits from the Missoula floods. And I will leave you this excellent paper on an introduction to the ice age floods. Floods. During the last ice age from 18,000 to 12,000 years ago, before the catastrophic Younger Dryas event, which ended the ice age, and in pul multiple previous ice ages, cataclysmic floods inundated portions of the Pacific Northwest. And the most recent one left evidence in the form of giant sandbars. Here's the West Bar from the f one of the most recent and the most recent floods from Great Lake Missoula. Here's more gigantic sand dunes. And again, now, I've brought you all this far, seven minutes in. And if these sandbars were deposited through a process of glacial floods being released as the continental ice sheet up in Canada melted catastrophically during the first, second, third Dryas or the Younger Dryas, and what we're looking at here is the last geomorphic expression of those glacial outwashes, then there is no possibility of the Pacific Ocean washing over North America whatsoever because these landforms would have been erased because we're talking about a flood a hundred times larger than this one and flowing in the opposite direction, back upstream which would simply erase these landforms in an instant. And in fact, none of them are erased anywhere for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of square miles. In fact, there is evidence of each and every single one of the floods going back 18,000 years in this region. Nothing is erased. Nothing has been washed over from the Pacific moving to the east. Nothing whatsoever. In fact, there is no evidence of any of the geomorphology in all of North America being erased recently. Now, what we are preparing for is a grid down scenario and a transition back into the Stone Age. As our sun wakes up, our magnetosphere has weakened substantially. The biggest threat to your future as a human on Earth is what happens when the power goes out forever? How will you survive? And that is where your mindset should be on. Nothing else. None of the cosmic pole flip gobbledygook because there is no geologic evidence on Earth for that happening anytime recently. Zero. I think the, the Great Pyramids would have been a little bit more weathered than they are with their proximity to the oceans and many other megaliths that are on the coast would have been destroyed yet they still stand so I'm asking you tonight to think about logic and these ripples that were formed before the supposed end of the last ice age during the catastrophe that caused the melting of the ice caps if there was a catastrophic flood coming from the Pacific due to a pole shift that snapped back, these ripples would not exist. And that's boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when you're being lied to by alarmists that are selling books and selling land in the most dangerous city in North America next to a penitentiary. Be careful who you listen to. 
regardless of how many subscribers they have. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it, and we'll see you soon. Thanks to all our new Patreons, our one-time donors, and the heroes that share this video. If you have any questions, leave them below, and I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm.